So I can speak in general terms. Obviously, we try to protect the confidentiality of specific users of our service. But in general, what happens when we have a family with children on site, we actually try to get them connected to services as quickly as possible. So we're going to be trying to connect to every other service provider in the community that services families with children. It's a challenge for us because those services are insufficient. So oftentimes, the locations that will accept an intact family are full. And oftentimes, it means that families choose to stay in their car rather than get separated. We do know that we have families who have a Section 8 voucher. Those are portable all across the country, but there's a process. Families who don't know how to navigate the system don't always follow the process, so there's this weird bridge between wherever they were being housed using that voucher and their new housing location using that same voucher. So Jocelyn's team is going to do what they can to connect them to the local housing authority so that they can follow all of those processes. And those are set up federally. They're actually not something that we can control. Atypical that the users who come to the courtyard have Section 8 as an option. We do what we call bridge housing. So that's housing that's going to, instead of the waiting room being in the street, you can wait someplace safe. A family with a Section 8 voucher does not meet the definition of homelessness. When in actuality, the family, any family with a Section 8 voucher should go directly to the housing authority. The housing authority oversees that transition. They call it porting in. So if you're coming out of a, another community, you can port in with that voucher. Location they came from can work with the location they're moving to so that the transition is seamless and they, they never have to spend a night in their car. In this case, it didn't happen for that family. So Jocelyn's team is gonna to try to bridge house them with whatever resources are available. There just aren't a lot available. That's why this story is so important, by the way. Like we really want to talk to the community about the challenges of a system that isn't prepared for the changing dynamics of homelessness. Another service provider in this case is the service provider who worked with the family initially to do the bridge housing. Really trying to move upstream with the people we serve, right? They should never leave wherever they are. So if you have a Section 8 voucher, there is a process that ensures that you don't end up homeless. So there's no reason to throw all the kids and Fido in the car and head out without a plan in place. So Section 8 is a federal program with fairly defined rules. So if I live in San Diego, I tell the housing authority in San Diego that I am relocating to Las Vegas. San Diego connects with the housing authority in Las Vegas and that starts the process. If a family ends up here and uh, has not used that process so that there, there's not a gap between their housing and they find themselves on our streets, we engage as we would engage with anyone else. And so we're trying to look at the universe of options. And that's why I say oftentimes families will choose to stay in their cars rather than into other services because our universe of options locally is limited for families with children.